So we're going to be creating two sets of stored procedure, a caller stored procedure and a called stored procedure. So this is a stored procedure which is called. It will have two sets of parameters. In parameter means this is going to be an incoming value. An out parameter means this will going to be an outgoing value. Again, the language of choice will going to be SQL. We are beginning a block and we end the block. Within the block, this is what I want to do is the incoming variable, I want to use it to insert a value in test message. So insert into test message values and I'm using message for that purpose. So the in variable is automatically used for inserting. The out variable, which is reply, this is where I will going to assign it some kind of a value. I don't even have to write a return statement. Since we declared reply with the keyword out, at the end of the call, it will automatically be shipped back to the caller. Now, in pseudocode, in pseudocode, not programming languages, what command do we use in assigning a value to a variable? In pseudocode, which command do you use? Because in pseudocode, every statement starts with a command. What command in pseudocode do we use when you assign a variable its value? Hmm? Set. And that is what SQL PL or PL SQL or all stored procedure languages use any statement that is used for the assignment of the variable that must start with a command. If you have been noticing all along, all statements start with a command. Create, language, begin, end, insert, set. Each statement starts with a command. So set, what is the name of the variable that I'm setting? Reply. Now I'm going to set up my reply. And I can use all those operators I learned in SQL. For example, message, inserted, successfully, concatenation operator, and I would like to now pull the current date and I would like to insert along so this will going to be the value that I'm passing back to whoever called it okay whoever called it now you're going to compile this one but don't run it because we're going to be calling it from the caller stored procedure, which we still need to code. So we're going to code that guy. We're going to call that guy, and then he will going to call this guy. So that is why you simply make sure that it compiles successfully. This is all you want to make sure. Okay, so we will now go to create our next procedure. This will going to be called caller procedure. The caller procedure will also going to take one parameter from the user. And the only purpose of this parameter will going to be that after it is received, it will going to be used to just simply pass it over to the call. If you notice, we are using pretty much the same syntax 
between the procedures so we are going to be learning a couple of things in this example and what will going to be those couple of things how many parameters does called expects from the caller two which are message and reply. Caller only has one parameter that it receives from outside. So it needs to produce one more parameter. So this is where we will going to learn how you declare a variable in stored procedure. So one will going to be a parameter and one will going to be a local variable. Together it will going to be passing two values over. Again, going back to your pseudocode days, when you have to introduce a new variable, what command do you use? To set a variable's value, you say set. To introduce a variable in your pseudocode, what command do you use? Declare. declare, and that's exactly what you use here. Declare. So declare a variable with a data type and a value uh, and, a, and a size so this is how you're going to declare a variable declare variable name and a data type if you notice all the data types are the same as you have used in SQL how do you call a stored procedure what command do you use to call a stored procedure? Call. call. So this is exactly the command that you are going to use even inside a stored procedure when it is calling another stored procedure. Call. So the caller is calling called and it's passing two parameters and it has to be in the same order as it is expecting to receive. Message will going to be the first one because on the other side, side it, is, it is expecting somebody of size 100. And log val will going to be the second one because on the other end it is expecting somebody of size 150. And as you have seen over here that I purposely kept one parameter's name the same and one parameter's name the different because the names don't matter. It is the size that matters. I know what you're thinking, Chad. <laughs> okay, so now we make a call. Now we make a call from line 22 to line 10. Message gets passed into message. Log well gets passed into reply. The message is an in parameter. We're going to be used locally to insert a message in test message. Reply will actually going to get its value message inserted successfully, followed by the current date. And we're going to be shipped back to line 22, where it will be automatically assigned to the log val. So when this line is over, log val will going to get that value from line 15. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it to insert my data into another table that we created called procedure log. Procedure logs, values, log val. Okay, so I would like you to compile this one and make sure that it gets compiled successfully. Then I'll again tell you what to do next. In order for you to make a call to caller, you simply type call, caller, and then you pass some kind of a message. And then you execute it, and it will going to be the message that will going to pass over. 
Now, once you make this particular call, and after the success of this call, now you would have to check two tables. Why? Because caller will going to take this message, welcome to, welcome to DB2 UDB, and we're going to pass that message over to the called, which will going to insert this message in test message. And then it will going to pack another message back for the caller, which the caller will insert in procedure logs. So I want you to check both of these tables to make sure that they both have what it needs. So we will go call caller, the caller will go to call called. So, so many call, call, call. Again, for your reference, the tables that we have created, create table test message, message, bear care, 100. So that's our test message table. And then we have the second table as procedure logs. And that's a log message. And that's of size 150. So they're very simple tables. I don't recreate them. I'm just putting here for your reference. You can comment them. But please make sure that you check both of these tables to make sure that they each have one additional record.